Sup guys, I've got the key to this Genesis GV60 performance. Shout out to Miles, you guys already know about the miles per hour intro, but the key, uh, the key is me. It's my, it's my fingerprint actually, that's a corny intro. But yeah, I've been driving around this Genesis GV60 performance for the past couple of days, almost a week, and I have not had a key fob with me once yet and I want to talk about that because I think it's actually been a really interesting experience um, now I've actually never driven a Genesis before and so this is my first time trying what I've seen on the streets and kind of known as the high-end Hyundai and it turns out there's a lot that these have in common with Hyundai but let me walk you through it and then I'll explain why I haven't had a key so the GV60 is the smallest in their uh, entire Genesis crossover lineup there's also a GV70 and a GV80 both of which look kind of similar to this that actually I think they look better but this is a sort of like a squashed down smallest possible version of the crossover it, the looks have been growing on me and I kind of like it quite a bit uh, it's got these big 21 inch wheels on it sort of a decently sporty look uh, the one that it reminds me the most of to be honest is the Kia EV6 and uh, you all know how I felt about the EV6 I love driving the EV6 GT and that car is still more fun to drive than this Genesis, but I, the looks have kind of grown on me. This thing's kind of nice. Got this big open window, really good visibility. I like these lights. These have grown on me since I've been driving it, and I might as well pop the trunk open so you can see they light up. And the trunk space is a pretty good size too. So I've always kind of known these as a, uh, a high-end version of a Hyundai, and I'll, I'll show you the similarities, but You've got this boot cover, if you want to lodge that in there. This sort of rolls back like that, and you've got a pretty good sized trunk. And a little bit of sub trunk for your charging accessories. 12 volt outlet over there to the side. Not too much surprising here. What I actually find the most interesting is this is like a satin paint. Like a, like a factory pearl satin finish here, which is really interesting. Uh, we get around to the front, you can see the 21 inch wheels again. And then those bug eyes, I think, they look like bug eyes because they're kind of four-eyed, but that's what it looks like from the front. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I actually think they did a decent job. So let's get into uh, the key stuff, shall we? So instead of a key fob, the traditional fob that I might carry around and have in my pocket with me, I have had two alternate ways of getting into this vehicle. One of them has worked much more consistently than the other. The one is face unlock and my biometrics with my fingerprint and the other is the phone key, which uses ultra wideband from the iPhone specifically. The face unlock, it's been so-so, and I, I suspect this is the one that's going to be the most iffy, but it does work, and when it works, it's pretty good. So let me show you how it works. You come up to the car, you don't have your key or anything on you, and all you gotta do is walk up and look at this camera right here. So you stand about two, three feet from the car like that, and you look at the camera, and as soon as you do, those handles will pop out when it sees you, and you can open the car like that. Whenever you wanna close it, and you just hit that little sensor right there, it locks the car up for you. If you wanna hit it again while looking at the camera, that camera right there in the A-pillar is what's seeing my face. I had to stand there and register my face with the software inside the car for it to know that about me. Now once I'm inside, even though I still don't have a fob, I still need to unlock and get into the car and drive. So you hit that little start stop button down there, I put my foot on the brake, and this little orb thing flips over, and now I can unlock with my fingerprint and everything is registered. It's a little fingerprint reader down here. I also had to register this kind of just like when you first get a new phone and you need to register your fingerprint and register your face unlock. That stuff gets you into the car to unlock and start driving. Now, I've, I've never had a car actually have that face unlock feature before. I think it was rumored that the Tesla Roadster oh, I hate these on off buttons in cars, man. Just turn off when I get out. The, wasn't the Tesla Roadster rumored to have like a face unlock thing where you like swipe down the side door and it would pop open once it saw your face? Kind of weird, but I've never seen it in a car. Here's the reason why I don't like it. There are too many variables and it's not quite consistent enough to be like seamless and smooth every time like the second option is. Number one, because I walk up to the car, everyone is a different height. And this is a wide enough camera to get me at six foot three, but only if I look down a little bit or hunch down a little just to get into the frame of view, 
I imagine if you're shorter or taller, you might have some different experiences. But also number two, in weather. If I'm ever wearing a mask, if I'm ever in the rain, or if I'm ever, God forbid, in a cold environment, and it's snowed, or there's like ice, or anything covering this up, I don't even know if there's heat elements in here. I'm testing this in the middle of the summer. But if the heat elements aren't strong enough, you're gonna have just this camera frozen over, and that's not a good way to get into the car either. So it's neat that you can do it, and it's cool that it actually works and does well sometimes, but I much prefer the second way. So let me show you that. So the second way of getting into the car, I've walked away so I can demo it for you, is the phone key. But this is not like other phone keys. So what you've probably seen and been used to with other phone keys is a Bluetooth app, a Bluetooth phone key, something like what Tesla has or what Rivian has. And to be totally honest, those have maybe like a 75, 85% success rate. A lot of times I walk up to the car and stand next to it for a while and nothing happens. This we've seen in like some Apple keynotes and some events where they talk about this like ultra wide band key. And uh, well, I'll just show you how it works. I put it in my pocket here and I've had basically 100% success rate where not only does it unlock every single time uh, pretty quickly and I'll just hit the button on the car when I get up to it, but it also knows by the time I get to the car which phone key I am. So when I walk up to the driver's side door, it knows, oh, you're the one with the driver's side profile. And when I get in, it's adjusted the settings of the car for me. So it's gonna unlock, I'll jump in. And when I do, you'll actually see it just knows that it unlocked with the phone key by telling me on my wrist, yeah, I use the phone key from the phone, then I get in just like normal. So besides the satin white paint, you've got the speaker system all around this car by Bang & Olufsen. This is an entirely blue interior with green stitching, and it, it kind of has an interesting vibe to it. I don't think I would choose it, but I kind of get it. Here's one thing neat. You have adjustment for the driver's side, uh, passenger side front seats on this side. They're also down there on the other side if the passenger wants to adjust them, but I've never seen that before. So if I just want to move the passenger seat around, I can do that. Then you've got this little crystal ball thing here. It's totally non-functional until you put your foot on the brake and hit the start stop button. And then it flips over and it's your gear selector. Drive, reverse, neutral, park. And it kind of glows a little bit. I, it's somewhere on the line between gaudy tacky and like kind of neat and functional because you always know if you're in gear based on if this thing's flipped over or not kind of cool i guess uh selector here for messing around on the software the software is a lot of the same stuff we saw in the hyundai and uh some of these tactile buttons are still here too changing temperature is all good turning it on and off still works here's the glove box it's a drawer have you ever seen a drawer glove box I've tested quite a few cars and I haven't. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And then, yeah, the performance generally is is pretty solid. Again, the EV6 GT, which is around the same price and around the same size, has about 20 miles less range, it has 200 mile range versus this has like 220, but it's way more fun to drive. And it will have more Kia-like interior where this is a little more soft Alcantara, fading and glowing lights and leather seats and things like that. So if you prefer a little softer, a little more luxury, you would get this. I would pick the EV6 GT. But generally, I was fascinated by the fact that they're actually shipping cars these days, turn it off, uh, with like face unlock really happening. Uh, would you get a car and really trust and use the face unlock? I'll tell you a quick story before I head out. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was here at the studio and I had driven the Rivian R1T to the studio and I used the Bluetooth phone key on my iPhone. So there's a Bluetooth connection between my phone and the car and there's a Rivian app. While I'm at the studio, I get an email saying that phone key is down. It doesn't work for now and we're working on getting the system up and running again. And I was like, oh, that's unfortunate because I didn't even bring the key fob to the studio and the Bluetooth phone key is down, which means I'm stuck here. I was literally stuck at the studio for a couple hours. Luckily I was, I was working and it didn't really matter. And by the end of the day, the issue was resolved, but just not having the key fob with me and trusting the Bluetooth app was uh, potentially gonna let me down and strand me for a little bit. So I don't know if this is a little bit better or potentially much more reliable than the Bluetooth phone key, I could see this being a much more ideal future, but obviously not every phone can do this, not every car can do this. 
So it's a little glimpse into the future that I think is pretty cool uh, and hopefully will never leave you stranded like I was left stranded by the Rivian for a couple hours. Either way, let me know what you think. Genesis GV60, would you trust your face to unlock your car? Thanks for watching. Check in the next one. Peace.